Video podcasts are growing in popularity, with Spotify integrating with many podcast hosting providers, podcast video clips are often shared to social media, and YouTube is encouraging podcast creators to make more video content. Should you start a video podcast or add a video component to your current show? Well, before you invest in equipment, make sure you have the bandwidth and tools to edit a video version of your podcast. If you record using Riverside, you can actually export a high-quality, up to 4K video of your show with your co-hosts displayed side-by-side automatically. Plus, you can export vertical clips for social media or TikTok, and we'll cover how to do that at the end of this video. If you're ready to jump into a video podcast, here are some equipment options at starter and advanced levels for all budgets. You should also consider your recording space and whether it's conducive to quality video and audio content. We have an entire video walking you through building out a home studio, and you can check that out at the link above. Now, when it comes to a video podcast, you still want to start with great audio. A quality mic with a boom arm or mic stand is necessary for any podcast, video or audio only. If you're just starting out, I highly recommend this microphone. This is the Audio-Technica ATR2100. It is a USB and XLR microphone, meaning you can connect it directly to your computer with just one cable, and it has that XLR input. If you're going to expand, add multiple inputs, and an audio interface, You'll want to put a windscreen. You can get these on Amazon pretty inexpensively, and it'll help a lot with plosives and percussive sounds hitting the microphone too hard. For an intermediate option, I would suggest the Shure M7. It can also connect via USB or XLR, and it has a really good sound for the price point, around $250. It's kind of the baby brother to this microphone, which is the Shure SM7B. This is the microphone you see on pretty much every video podcast. If you see clips on social media, this is the microphone they're using. It's $400, but you need an expensive audio interface to really drive this microphone. So this is kind of an advanced and pro-level option for your video podcast. And because the microphone will be on video, you might want to consider something that looks cool or at least appeals to you. Another advanced option is the Earthworks Ethos. I really like how this microphone looks, so if you're doing a video podcast, I think it's pretty appealing on camera. But it is pretty expensive, around $750 to $800. You don't need an expensive audio interface to run it. You can run it with a pretty simple Scarlett 2i2 or a cheaper audio interface, and it does sound incredible. You're also going to need an arm to hold the microphone while you do your video podcast. This is the Rode PSA1 arm. Having the arm means you can place the microphone where you need, and if anything taps the arm, it won't get picked up by the microphone, which is really useful. A couple other options is the Thron Max microphone arm. It has a built-in XLR cable, which is really nice. Also, Elgato has a low-profile arm if you're doing a video podcast and you have a desk or table and you want that arm really close to the table and not kind of sticking out or sticking in from the side, that's another great option. Or you can just use a floor stand microphone. You see a lot of this where people are in couches or sitting in chairs on a video podcast and there's just a microphone stand on the floor. Now, if budget allows to invest in some lighting for the video podcast, you can start with some cheaper LED lights around $30 or $40. You can put these pretty far away from your subjects and try to light the scene. Again, $50, maybe get two or three if you can. You can also use ring lights, but again, that could be pretty harsh depending on where you place those. I would recommend the Elgato Key Light Airs. Those are great options. You can control brightness and color temperature, and you can put them just on a regular stand. And if you're looking for an advanced lighting option, I would recommend one of the Aperture 120D lights or the Amaran 200X with the Light Dome. The Light Dome 2, getting the larger version, will give you a lot of great soft light covering a large area. And if you could get two of those so you can cover multiple guests from different angles, that's really the best option for lighting your video podcast. Then one of the most important aspects after lighting is video. How are you capturing the video of multiple in-person guests for this video podcast? You can actually use your iPhone, and Riverside is a great feature called Secondary Camera, where you can connect multiple devices in a Riverside recording and actually get all of those angles recorded as separate video tracks. We have a whole video explaining how to do that. You can check the link above. Maybe it's just one camera because you're recording with remote guests, or you need multiple. The Sony ZV-E10 is a great option. You can actually get interchangeable lenses, and it has great autofocus, which is a big deal when coming to video podcasts and you don't have someone monitoring all the cameras in the focus. You want something with great autofocus, and the Sony lineup of cameras is one of the best. The ZV-E10 can be paired with a Sigma 14mm 1.4 aperture lens. That means it can do really well in low light because the aperture can open very wide, lets lots of light in, and you get a great bokeh, which is that blurred background effect. If you want to step up and really go for the advanced level, the Lumix S5 is a good option. I love the look of that camera and the video it produces, but the autofocus can be a little unreliable, which again, you need excellent autofocus for something on video where you're not monitoring the cameras. So for excellent autofocus at the advanced level, 
You can go for the Sony a7S III, one of the industry standard video cameras, and the Sony a7 IV, which is actually what I'm using right now to record this video and would serve really well in a video podcast. And of course, for those cameras, you're gonna need tripods. You can get desk-mounted tripods, like the one I use on my desk, or if you have kind of a larger space with sofas and chairs, you'll probably need some freestanding tripods. We'll put links in the video description to all of those options on Amazon. Plus, we have a whole video showing you how to connect your mirrorless cameras to a computer to use them as a webcam, which would serve you well in a video podcast setup. So you can click the link above for that. Now, let's say you recorded your video podcast with Riverside. If you're not sure how to do that, here's a whole playlist on using Riverside for your remote recordings. Now you can export that video to use as a video podcast and upload it to YouTube, directly to Spotify, or vertical video for social media. Log into your Riverside Studio and then click the View All Recordings on the studio you use to record. Click on the episode or session that was recorded. Then from here, click the Edit and Export button. Now you can choose whether you want to do a 16x9 landscape video for YouTube or vertical for social media, and then even trim the clip to a specific moment you want to share. Click the tracks icon and you can choose which hosts and even screen recordings you want to use in this clip. Select the size button and you can choose 16 by 9 for widescreen or 9 by 16 for a vertical video. You can change the layout and even add a little space between the video clips and even do picture in picture if you really want to focus on one video shot. The full frame and shared AI features will actually focus on whoever is speaking and change throughout the clip, even the entire episode. Then you can export the full episode or can use these trim bars in the editor to get a specific clip to share for TikTok or Instagram Reels. You can choose what video quality you want to export all the way up to 4K. You can choose to normalize audio levels, which will try to bring the volume from all the co-hosts and guests on the recording to the same level. Then depending on your location, you can actually export the full video to Spotify and Transistor, a podcast hosting company, right here from the Riverside editor. So those are some tips on preparing and launching a video podcast and how you can export that right in the Riverside studio. If you have other questions about video switchers or podcast automation, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell icon, and leave questions in the comments below. We'd love to answer you there. And if you want to start using Riverside to record your audio only or video podcast, here's a playlist walking you through our iPhone, iPad app, and everything you need to know. Thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you in the next video.